Today's episode has been brought to you by Schedulicity. And also by the 20 hour yoga for pelvic health teacher training. I love to teach this. It is happening in Meaford, Ontario, Canada, just 40 minutes from where I live, September 19th and 20th. That's over the weekend. And if you are thinking about flying in or traveling in for this, reach out to me with your questions about transportation and accommodation. I am happy to help you where I can. Spots are already filling now, even though this training is nine months away. So if you plan to register or if you have questions, let's chat. Go to the connectedyogateacher.com and look under trainings and events to find out more or to register. Hello and welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast. I feel like I have missed this so much. Even though you have been getting weekly episodes, I did a podcast break. So I had batched some episodes to break around the end of the year, around the holidays. And I feel like I'm back. And you might even hear that I'm back after a cold. (laughs) So for those of you who are new here, I'm your host, Shannon Crow. I'm a mom of three, a yoga teacher and a trainer and consultant who works for yoga teachers. This podcast was created for you so that you can connect to information and inspiration every single week and feel supported as you navigate not only being a yoga teacher, but also being a business owner. This week, we're talking ads, specifically Facebook ads. I know, it scares me a lot, so don't worry. We're in this together. Let's learn together. Facebook ads can be an incredibly powerful tool if it is done well. The thing is, with Facebook changing and its ad algorithm ever so often, it can be tricky to know how to put up effective ads on Facebook what the general best practices are, and how to get the most bang for your buck from your advertising money on Facebook. Well, you are in luck, Connected Yoga Teachers. Claire Pelletro is here to answer all of these questions and to simplify the whole process for you. Claire has expertise in not only Facebook ads, but also Instagram ads. We dig into how to use Facebook ads when you're targeting a location, specific audience, general Facebook ads best practices, and the difference between doing ads yourself and hiring someone. There is a lot of great content in this episode. It's perfect for anyone who's already dabbling in Facebook ads or for the person who hasn't started yet. All of our show notes are ready for you at theconnectedyogateacher.com slash 152. There you can find the links that we talk about along with clickable timestamps so you can easily go back to a specific topic in each and every episode. Before we dig right into Facebook ads, I want to give a huge shout out to Nanako. We had a coaching call together and she left a review and I wanted to share it with all of you. Nanako says, I had a coaching call with the lovely Shannon Crow last Thursday. I'd highly recommend a coaching call if you're feeling a little lost. It's so nice to talk to someone who works on the same industry and who can give advice to push you in the right direction. It does require you to do your own work. I'm still working on my homework, Shannon. One of the tasks was to contact a local tourist guide. So Connected Yoga Teachers, Nanako lives in a Japanese mountain ski area. It's absolutely stunning. I love following her Instagram stories. I'll put a link in our show notes to her Instagram stories. But if you want to find her, it's nano.yoga. So search for at N-A-N-O dot yoga, and you'll find her there. So she went on to say, one of the tasks was to contact this local tourist guide she advertised with last year, and also to reach out to some previous students that she worked with. And she went on to say in her email to me, it turns out that the guy in charge would like to do an article about yoga. How incredible. I was going to get in touch, but I wonder if I had left it later on, he would have had less time to make this happen. Thanks so much, Shannon, for your podcast, your coaching, and for supporting this big community. Thank you so much, Nanako, for taking the time to leave this review, to send me this note, this update. I know that sometimes I do give quite big asks for the homework that I send home with anyone after a consultation call, but I love to hear the results. So I would love an update as well. Go ahead and share in our Facebook group or tell us in your Instagram stories. It'd be really fun to hear an update of how that article went. Connected yoga teachers, if you are thinking about booking a consultation call with me, 
They're an hour long. It's online via Zoom. And I don't want you to hesitate to book. I know that I'm getting some emails from people who are saying, I want to book this month, but I see that you don't have anything available until next month. I'm getting a little more structured with my batching and my consultation calls is in there. So if you're thinking about booking, get it on the calendar early and I would love to help and support you in your yoga business. So to find out how to work with me, you can go to the connectedyogateacher.com. All of the information is there. I also want to give a shout out of thanks to Schedulicity and a huge congratulations to them. If you're already using Schedulicity, you will see that they have done a revamp of their logo and also the calendar. It looks very nice. So let's hear our hot tip of the week from Schedulicity. Connected Yoga Teachers, this is Allison with the Schedulicity Hot Tip of the Week. Feng Shui your yoga space by getting rid of appointment books, messy calendars, and stacks of sign-in sheets. Keep your business energy flowing with the new advanced marketing option. So Shannon, Blake asked you what you'd like to automate and you said everything. We agree. Now you can automate your thank you messages, birthday greetings, time to book reminders, and re-engagement discounts for people you haven't seen in a long time. Set and forget your preferences and stay even more connected with your clients. You can also promote your services and products at the time of online booking to add even more value to your clients' visits. If you're looking to attract more prosperity in your business life, add some elements of wood and water and check out Advanced Marketing. Thank you so much, Team Schedulicity. I loved the -the behind-the-scenes story of the logo. And if you want to search around and look for that Connected Yoga Teachers, you can find out why they chose the colors that they chose or the logo and how they hired a local artist. I just think it's a really powerful thing when we combine story with our brand and our product. Alrighty, Connected Yoga Teachers, I am so excited about this interview. Claire Pelletro is not only a Facebook and Instagram ads consultant who works with seven and eight figure course creators who really want to increase the income that they're bringing in as opposed to the advertising spend that they're spending on their Facebook ads. She is also a podcast host, and I highly recommend going to listen to her podcast. So if you want to listen to more from Claire, look for the Get Paid podcast. It is amazing how she digs into the tough money questions right away. I love her questions. I love her style of interviewing. If you like this interview today, make sure you hop on over and listen to more of Claire. Claire talks about how she helps her clients to get real results from Facebook ads and how she uses a process of gathering the data, analysis, the strategy, and then experimenting. You're going to hear today how Claire offers done-for-you ad management and in-depth consultations, as well as Facebook ads courses and other resources for those of you who are looking for a do-it-yourself Facebook ad strategy. Let's meet Claire and dig into Facebook ads. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be here at the end of the interview telling you what my action step after listening today is, and I'd love to hear yours. Welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast, Claire. It's great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I know. I'm excited that I get to ask you a lot of questions about Facebook ads. I'm a huge fan of your podcast. And I'm definitely going to link to it in the show notes. I've talked about it on the podcast before in terms of how it's helped me with my own mindset of raising my rates. So thank you for that work. Oh, you're so welcome. What specifically have you done? If you don't mind, if I get into the interview seat. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. One huge example. I forget which episode it was. I had an online course that I was offering. It was $120. And this woman was just like, you know, try it out, raise it. And so I increased it overnight to 379 and nobody batted an eye and people, it was selling at the same price or wow. selling at the same rate for the higher price. Did you expect some kind of backlash to that? Yeah, I did. Hmm. Like angry <laughs> emails or comments on social media? Yeah, something. And nobody said anything. They were probably thinking, oh, Maybe I'll buy this now because that price tells me this is really good stuff. It's so funny how a bigger investment just makes us think that something's going to be better. Yes, it is. It is really interesting. Uh, I know an old farmer up this way and he used to put something in the paper, 
put a price on it. He was going to sell like a piece of machinery or whatever. And if it wouldn't sell, he'd just double the price and put it in again. And it would sell. (laughs) That's fascinating. Just double it. (laughs) (laughs) So let's dig into Facebook ads because I know a lot of our yoga teacher listeners will say, you know, I have an event coming up. Do I put some ads out there? I have a teacher training or I have an online course or I have this thing in my area or my yoga classes. And then they'll say, I've never done Facebook ads before. I'm not sure where I should start. Well, I just want to kind of make the case for Facebook ads quickly just to talk about in addition to bringing in, you know, lots of new people, it can also just give you back a ton of time because I know that like people in the wellness industry, especially, I feel like they spend so much time creating stuff to put on social media, writing emails, things like that. But like email, email open rates are down reach is nothing on social. But when you just find a great ad, you can just let it go. I mean, I literally have ads running right now that are doing things for my business that are bringing in leads that are bringing in sales. And that lets me, that gives me the time and headspace to just kind of experiment with other interesting marketing things. So I'm not saying they've completely replaced my marketing, um, but they're, they're enhancing it because everything that you do, Shannon, for your business, everything that you do to market it organically, getting on other people's podcasts, writing blog posts or posting on social media, um, maybe doing like an online summit to get you in front of somebody else's audience. That's cool. But then if the people do not, if they come to your website, let's say, but they don't actually take any action, they don't Uh, book something with you, buy something, sign up for something free, you know, usually that person is gone instantly. But the great thing about ads is that, you know, if you have a hundred visits in a week or a thousand or 10,000, you can capitalize and like recapture those visits on the social media channels where people are just like hanging out and kind of doing spending time, wasting time, just like doing the scroll. So you can get back in front of them. That's something that um, I don't think everyone is thinking of that, like you're working really hard to get in front of people, then let Facebook and Instagram ads repeatedly put you in front of them for a little bit of time so they can really think and and make a decision about whether or not they're going to continue to engage with your business. So that's my little spiel. It doesn't sound like your people necessarily need convincing, but I think the focus is a lot of times on, oh, what kind of money I can make, um, but not necessarily on the time that it can buy back for you. All right. So you've definitely enticed me with that. I feel like, Mm -hmm. okay, great. And I have played around with and put a pixel on my website. I don't remember how I did it. I feel like maybe it's probably changed since then. And that's how we would capture like someone coming to our website, that pixel, whatever code would grab it. And then we could somehow make a Facebook ad with that. Is there some simple way or do you have some kind of a blog post that would help us do that step by step if we have a website and how to retarget those people? If you search in Google and we could probably get uh, the actual blog post into the show notes, but I know that I have a couple blog posts. They're sort of in a series about retargeting specifically. So basically something that describes this campaign of, okay, somebody comes to your site or they engage with you on Instagram or Facebook, and then they start seeing your ads automatically. So yeah, we can definitely get a blog post um, linked up for you. The thing is, you'd be surprised that pixel thing hasn't changed. That's been like the one thing they've kept steady because they kind of built everything around it. So the pixel for people who are listening is just a, like a little bit of code that you go into your Facebook ad account and you copy and then you go and you put it into the header of your site. And I definitely have blog posts, YouTube videos all about how to install the pixel. So you could just search Claire. Claire Pell's 
conversion tracking and then whatever site you use, like WordPress or Squarespace or lead pages. Um, and there are definitely instructions on that. But it's some it's something that you place one time uh, on your site and then it collects information about your visitors. And then it can tell Facebook, oh, that user right there, she visited Shannon's site. Let's show her an ad by Shannon for like, a free guide to pricing your classes or, you know, whatever your opt-in content is. So I really recommend that campaign, that everyone start with that campaign. It could be $5 a day. If people aren't getting a lot of organic traffic, then you might turn that on and off. Like, oh, okay, this is sort of stopped working. I need to let my site traffic build up again a little bit and then show it again. Um, I tend to turn my own one on and off as well, because I don't get like tons of traffic, but enough that, um, you know, every couple of weeks I'll turn it on. I'll get a bunch of new leads, usually a sale. And then I'll notice the trends are that people have stopped signing up. So I turn them off for a little while. Oh, interesting. So if you see that that kind of dips down, why do you think that is? Why does that dip happen? Well, it's tricky. I've been playing around with it quite a bit because my site traffic is typically new people, right? So if I just have an audience that is my site traffic, it can go, it can go kind of steadily. But what I've been adding in is engaged with my Facebook page. And this is the, the, the thing that is both good and bad is engaged with me on Instagram. Oh, because when I have something on Instagram that goes like, not viral, but I just get a lot of engagement on it. This will happen every once in a while because I just don't put a lot of, a lot of attention um, into Instagram marketing. But I, I posted something about setting boundaries and people you kind of went crazy out, over it. Then that increases my Instagram engagement audience, right? It like balloons it. My post gets shown to more people, more people are engaging, etc. So then that audience over on Facebook also balloons. Facebook has more people to show that ad to, right? But then it kind of dies down and my Instagram audience is not growing every day with new people. It's sort of the same people engaging with me on Instagram, more or less. Um, So that audience starts to like, they, they kept seeing the same ads over and over again. Like if you, you know, engage, sent me a message on Instagram, you'd start to see this ad. And then you keep seeing it. But if you've you've already signed up for it or like it's not a good fit for you, you're not going to sign up. You're not going to do anything. But it that will happen that I'll see, I'll just see the sign up stop coming in. And that tells me, okay, this audience needs a break from this offer for a little while. I kind of need to build it back up again with some more organic marketing. And then I can turn it back on. People who have a ton of traffic, you don't ever have to turn that off. Most of my clients, we never turn it off. Okay. So when you said like you try it out first with say $5 a day, our yoga teachers might be panicked thinking, oh my gosh, that really adds up over time. But I've listened to you on different podcasts and you basically say like, you need to be making more money back than that. Like that's your investment, but then you play around with it. And here's the other part where our listeners get stuck is they think, well, I'll try it. I'll throw maybe 20 or $60 at this ad. And then they think it didn't work. So how do we get from that? Like, cause I know you're a Facebook ads expert. How do we start out and play around with that a little bit? Or, or is it just like hire an expert and hand it over? No, do not hire somebody, especially, I mean, you know, if you have validated your idea and it's completely scalable and you can target people all over the world with your ads, if that's what your business model supports, then fine. If you're targeting local people, you will always have a limit to the people you can target. So you might, um, what do I call it? Fatigue your audience rather quickly. And so you might be spending $5 a day on the ads, but paying the expert, you know, $500, $1,000 a month. So save that money that you might pay somebody else and learn, learn to do it yourself. I would say, um, one of the best ways to really spend a small budget is by putting 
ads, putting video ads in front of brand new audiences. Now, how you convert the viewers of those ads to, you know, people in the doors of your studio or um, people who are coming to your teacher training certification, that that can vary depending on every business model. But if you can spend very little money on video ads and reach a lot of people. And then maybe all you do is kind of invite the people who like the video or who comment on it, invite them to come in or invite them to to do a trial period. I'm not sure what everyone's kind of business model is, but I, I do... I have run some ads for in like physical studios before. Mm -hmm. So I know that sometimes there are like uh, trial packages or things like that. But then the beauty of this is later when you do have an offer, maybe you have like a, you know, beginning of the year thing or back to school and you want to really promote it. You can take those video viewers because Facebook automatically creates audiences of them for you. Um, or they, they, they save them. So then when you go in and you say, all right, Facebook, give me an audience of people who have watched the following 10 videos, three seconds or more of them, like even that little can make a difference between somebody's willingness to buy is if they've seen three seconds of a video from your brand or not. Um, and then you choose to show them an ad for whatever you're promoting. So when you say a video ad, let's take something I have coming up. For example, uh, I have a three-day yoga teacher training happening in Bermuda. I'm I'm I put it on the calendar, kind of last minute for me anyway. <laughs> it's not until March, but because another one filled, so I was like, okay, oh, I have this request. I'd like to fly somewhere warm and sunny. So how would I then create a video? Would I just pop on and be like, come with me to Bermuda. It's going to be warm and sunny. Or do I have a video of this, the place? Like walk me through what that video looks like. Um, Okay. Well, I would say for you, unless you already have video footage of the place, do you? Uh, I probably do. And I could get some more easily. Oh, okay. Um, So then I would test two things. I would test just a you, um, Uh, like a talking head type video, kind of like what I'm looking at now, uh, where you describe it, um, you talk about past people's experiences, you kind of maybe even create a little bit of a a keynote or a PowerPoint type brochure that you can click through. So it doesn't have to be your face the entire time. Um, But that way people do also get to know you and they kind of get to hear about and start to experience the experience of the teacher training. Does so that make sense? It does. That really makes sense. And so would this be a video I make myself when you said, don't hire someone to do the ads yet. The The next place where our yoga teacher listeners will put a pile of money is they'll hire a videographer. Yeah. I am not the expert on whether or not people should do that. I have really conflicting feelings because expert, vi- like, expertly done video can really impact how people perceive something, right? At the same time, I don't know if it's necessary, right? Like if you have, let's say, you know, you're going to do multiple teacher trainings in the same location for the next five years, and you want to create some video assets to promote them, not just for now, but over time, um, then yeah, it's probably a great idea to make that investment, that financial investment in creating a great video in like getting somebody to help you script it because it's not just like, I will do video ads where it's just me talking about Facebook ads and it's my face. And then I share my screen that it's fine when that's quick and dirty. Right. And I think it's also fine when, um, I'm thinking about, going to a yoga class in my neighborhood. Do you know what the weird thing about me is? I don't go to something new, a a new class, because I don't know what the experience is going to be like. (laughs) I literally just don't know what the place is going to look like, who the teacher is going to be. Are they going to be nice? Are they going to be mean to me? So if I get like a video walkthrough of the place or like even just a talking head video of the teacher, like this is what I'm like. People 
who like my classes tend to be more advanced or be total beginners or something like that, that's going to endear me more to them. It helps to break down that objection, you know, of my fear of not knowing what it's going to be like. Right. This is so true. Someone was just saying the other day, how do I get more people to book one-on-one? And there was a big group of us saying, you know what, do some videos. Like, how does that person even know what it's going to be like? So that's what she's going to do is do definitely. I think video is probably the tactic to do for one-on-ones in particular, because one, it's a higher price point, right? So you know, like the value is just going to be more than somebody who maybe comes in for that trial month and then never comes back again. And you really have to get a ton of those. Um, But yeah. And then the call to action can be like, just message me. It doesn't have to be go to my site, buy this thing. It could be way more. And I think this is overlooked in the, I know mind body is a thing and it makes it easier to like book stuff online, but it doesn't make it easier for me to talk to anybody right? before I do. Right. So like I either have to pick up the phone and call or send an email. But if somebody's saying like, shoot me a DM with your questions, that, that to me would be perfect. So if let's take this example, cause I really like this example. We've got a yoga teacher who wants to get either more people in their group class or in their one-on-one sessions. And they say, message me. They put this video together. How long is the video? And then does it matter what kind of text they put to it? Does it matter if there's a link to their website? What's the next piece of this? Hmm. This is where I'm going to have to say there's no one answer and you would just test a lot of things. But let me give you, like, if you were my student in my course, um, my suggestion, I would say make the video five minutes max. Um, it's really an introduction, right? I'm not, don't make me sit through an entire sermon about the value. No, you know, I, I'm maybe later, but to start something, you know, that's just five minutes, make sure it has subtitles. I'm well, more like captions, I believe we say in English. Um, then I would definitely add quite a bit of supporting text to the video, uh, in, in the ad, not on the actual video. Just the the captions are fine, but in the ad copy section, because we don't want to assume that everyone wants to watch a video, but they might still stop and, um, and, and read what the ad has to say. I have a resource. It's more about like list building ads, but it does talk about the hook, which is really important. It's the very first bit of copy. Um, so then... There's actually an option. I think you could just use the button. There's a little button you can add to every ad and you it can say sign up or learn more or buy now um, or contact us is a good one or message, send a message. So right. you can actually set up ads. I believe they can only be shown on Facebook though, not on Instagram. And I really think that yoga people should absolutely be running their ads on Instagram as well. That's just a setting when you set up your ads. But there is one that like opens Messenger up directly. I don't, I don't know if you can run those on Instagram right now. Okay. So we would play around with, we, we would make this one video and it would go to Facebook and to Instagram. And we would do that all through our business manager on Facebook. It's not yep. something we do on Instagram. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Never hit that promote post or whatever on Instagram. Don't hit the boost post button on Facebook. You're throwing away your money. That's such a, I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> Until all I heard have. You, <laughs> I've heard you say, don't do that. So I'm like, okay, I won't do that. But I will say that I'm very hesitant to put money on Facebook ads. So I think that it's a hurdle and you saying that it would bring back some time into my life would be a huge benefit. What do you think your hesitations are? I think it's the putting it together. And I feel like it's a whole it's like this complicated thing. Like I know that you spend all day trying this and then trying something different and you will do that for every different company. But I feel like you have the secret formula (laughs) and Mm. I don't. Well, the secret is that the ads that my students are putting together are the exact same types of ads that I'm doing for my clients. 
the idea that it has to be some like super crazy multi-layered thing. Like there's another ad expert out there who has created a course that I'm told is too complicated. It might be very effective, but they can't follow it because it's too many bloody steps. Um, yeah, I, it's, it's the same. It's simple. Now, figuring out exactly the perfect message or, you know, what you should be promoting, that might be something you would work on with a, a business coach before you decide to run ads. Because if it's just like, well, let me, let me just get more people to know about my teacher trainings, for example. Do you already know how to convert the people who do know about it? Or are you struggling with that? Because if you're struggling to get people to buy to begin with, Facebook ads is not going to fix that. I'm sure you've also heard me say that Facebook ads are like Viagra. It's not going to make you good in bed. <laughs> no, I haven't. Heard oh, you haven't? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I guess I don't say it enough, but I mean, yeah, they will give you a boost. Ads will give you a boost. But if you're just sending yourself a bunch of traffic and nobody's buying because your messaging uh, needs work or you don't quite know the pain points of the people you're trying to convert, um, Facebook ads are not going to fix that. But when you have something in place that's already working, I mean, obviously you're, you're booking out your teacher training so that you're adding additional ones, you know what you're doing. You've already established what they call product market fit. Um, right. So you would definitely benefit from ads. I will say, and this is going to sound like salesy because I'm somebody who has a Facebook ads course, but this would be something I highly recommend. You don't go at alone. You don't, unless you love DIYing stuff, like if you DIYed your website and all your email stuff and you just love that, I don't recommend you you try to navigate Facebook ads alone. I am trying to navigate YouTube, just regular YouTube. Um, and I'm somebody who can pretty much do a lot of these things by reading tutorials and stuff, but I still end up with so many questions and it's, it's held me back. Like I can sense it's holding you back from using ads. It's thinking, what if I don't know, what if I come up against something and I don't know the answer to it? Exactly. Okay. So I want to make sure that we talk about your course at the end, but I'm wondering also, I have this other question first, because you talked about doing an ad for something that pays. Do we ever do an ad for something that doesn't pay? You did talk about a freebie. I'm thinking about my podcast, or maybe there's a yoga teacher who has a YouTube channel. So do we ever do ads for free things? Oh, absolutely. So a lot of times those video ads, like you could just have video ads that show a, a certain stretch that you know that people struggle with in your classes. This is what I call content awareness ads or goodwill ads. You're literally just teaching or um, being ridiculously useful. And that's one, a good way to just establish a relationship with your audience. Uh, and two, you can build up those video views, right? And then you can retarget them later. I Most of my ads are for free things, for list building primarily, because I know that I invari invariably make money from my emails, you know, like either during a launch or on Evergreen um, or... People, do they just sign up and then they get free content for a while and that establishes the know, like, and trust. They come and listen to my podcast. Um, so most, most certainly. For your podcast, let me ask you this because I'm happy to share my podcast ad strategy. How does your podcast specifically make you money? What's the like link from listener to all the way down to buyer? Two ways. I love that you're already doing this. Listeners, go listen to Claire's podcast because she will ask, how do you make money questions to everyone? Uh, two ways that the podcast makes money. We have a sponsor. That's number one. So mm -hmm. that's, our, that's our, like, we can pay for the team and pay for our time in that. It's really sweet. But as you know, it's a ton of time. So the other way is by me selling, like, my training or consultation calls with me or an online course that I have. Okay, cool. So do you have something in every episode, like a call to action that you can then track? <laughs> I a, love that you're asking this because I just asked this at a conference. Like, no, I don't have it in every episode for sure. 
sometimes I'll say, you know, like for instance, uh, my mama nurture training, it was a prenatal training. It ran last year and I was talking about it on the podcast a lot. And then, um, a lot of people said that they heard about it on the podcast. Mm. That's really not a way. I don't really have a tangible way to track that. Like other than they wrote it on their form. Sure. And, and yeah, uh, podcasts are so, I mean, they really do help in the sales process, but it's over a ton of time and it's not usually very trackable. But what if in each one of your episodes, you had, and you could do this, well, let me say the the strategy and then I'll tell you how I do it. What if you had a download or a free guide or a masterclass that you kind of promote on Evergreen? Do you have a main lead magnet right now? I do. It's a, I did a five day challenge on content, creating content, and it, it really helps to build my list for sure. Great. So then you can put in, like I do every other episode, each episode of mine promotes a different lead magnet. Um, so, but I recorded the ads once and then my, my editors just repeat them. Um, So it's just like this, you know, maybe something at the very beginning or the end or not the end, I would say the middle you put in and you say like, this episode is sponsored by my free challenge on creating content, yada, yada. And then this is what I didn't do. So make sure you do make sure the URL is different from whatever one is on your site or on other social media. So yeah. So like the call to action is sending them to a page that you're only going to track Like, this is how many people are coming from my podcast. Now, what you're able to do, if you have those in place, and you don't have to go back and change old podcast episodes, you could just do this moving forward, is you start to run what I call choose your own adventure ads. And that is a carousel ad of different podcast episodes. I would just say the podcast episodes where you have those advertisements in them. And then also some of your like favorite or most popular episodes. Then you can run those ads. I I get very cheap traffic over to the page site where each episode is hosted. Now I can't track whether or not anyone's listening, but I can track the eventual sign up to that free thing as coming from a podcast ad. Right. Okay. (laughs) I was wondering because this has been a big issue of mine of like how to track that. So do you have it, you have it in the show notes and you, you do it every other one. Like you put an ad in every other one or you switch it out. Like I switch out what the ad is for. So, um, one week it'll be for my, uh, five ads masterclass. The next week it'll be for my, um, target audience spreadsheet thing that I give away. And then it will just go back and forth. And I can see, you know, which ones I know that the five ads always brings in the customers. Um, but the, sometimes you just, you have different lead magnets as well to get people to continue to kind of engage with your brand. I also promote somebody else's masterclass because I'm an affiliate for it. And it's sort of, it's the reason why I'm now able to make a lot of money off of my ads. So it's, it's a good fit. I don't get to track that so clearly, but, um, but it's, it's definitely, it's a good fit for my audience. Yeah. Well, I know I've downloaded both of yours from listening to the podcast. So it's working. Oh, interesting. (laughs) So is that, do you just really listen to the podcast, but not spend very much time on my site? I mean, I guess if you're not running ads, why would you be there? Uh, listening to your podcast, it, it takes so many times of listening because I'm usually like out in my garden or doing something and I'm not going to click on something. So I actually have to listen enough times where I can remember the URL. Yes. And that's why it's fine that, you know, I've got 30 episodes this season that all promote or this year that all promote the exact same thing. Because I mean, I think it'd probably be nice if I changed out the actual ad creative a little bit more to freshen it up. Right. Because you're probably like, yes, Claire, I've heard you say this 90 (laughs) times, but you eventually opted in. Yes. It does take a long time on podcasts. I watch myself as a consumer of podcasts 
and how long it will take me to go and check something out and be on the email list. So yeah, very cool. Thank you for that. So if our yoga teachers are, I mean, the next thing they're going to think is, oh my gosh, how to put this video together. I like how you said, just get it done. You said like done and dirty or something. Quick and dirty. Yeah, quick and dirty. (laughs) Then they can just like do some kind of a video. Then do they just do that one, try it out? Or will they do multiple ones and try those? So here's what you could try. You could take that one video because I know it's hard enough to get that one done. And then you put together two ads that go to in front of the same audience, but just make them different by using different text. Okay. Try out different hooks at the beginning to see if you can grab people's attention in different ways. Can you ways. think of a good hook for what would get you to go to a yoga class? Um, well, okay. If you're talking directly to me, my problem is that I always feel like I'm the worst one in the class. So it would have to speak to that. It could even be like, do you avoid yoga because you always feel totally inept? Facebook might not like that language. They kind of want you to stay on the more positive side, but you could say something like, um, if you're avoiding yoga because it just feels, it feels harder than it looks, um, you know, like, I don't know, not you've come to the right place because technically I haven't gone anywhere yet. (laughs) But um, let us, let us be the studio that changes that for you. Or I don't love that. Um, Copy is not my strongest suit, but really just highlighting my pain point. And then instead of actually saying, this is, here's the solution. The best thing to do is talk about the what life looks like after the solution. So the benefits of me finally going to yoga more frequently, um, once I've gotten over that, you know, initial hump. Right. Like it would have to be that the benefit outweighs. So you go there and you feel like you're just not the best at it in the space, but then the benefit to highlight that, like, yeah, like give you paint me a picture. Like what if, you finally managed to get yoga to, you know, to create your yoga habit and started to feel X, Y, Z and started to sleep better and started to have more patience with your toddler, you know? So we're painting the, like, I need to be convinced. I really need to be convinced to go to a yoga (laughs) class. I will pretty much do anything, but, um, and So yeah, I need to see the outcome and then kind of tell me like why you're different. Right. Okay. This is really good. I hope our yoga teachers are thinking, all right, I'd love to get Claire to a yoga class because that is a try, (laughs) (laughs) especially if you're in the Northwestern Philadelphia area. I'd love to see what ad copy you come up with. Oh, that's good. Is there anything else that you think our yoga teachers should know? going into making Facebook ads. So they're going to try this. They're going to put their video together, two different types of text. They'll play around with it. Like how much money and how do we choose the audience? Okay. I actually really wanted to talk about audience budget. You can pretty much do like $5 a day for maybe six days, just because you're really, you're not going to see immediate results from a video, but you will start to see the engagement. And then after about five or six days, you're going to be able to say, okay, I have a winner here. You'll actually probably see the winning ad sooner. Um, So if you want, after you see like, basically what Facebook will do is it will stop showing one of your ads and it will put almost all of your budget behind the winner. Okay. So if you see that pretty quickly by just looking at the reports, if you wanted, you could, I don't recommend you pause anything that's working, but you could launch a new ad with different copy or maybe just try, well, if we're doing video, then yeah, it's not going to be an image. Then maybe try like a, a video slideshow. And that could be if, you've, if you're a studio or a, just a business that has great visuals, great photos, sometimes all you need is to give Facebook the photos and they'll create a slideshow for you. And that's even, it's like, it's, there's no narrative that I have to watch. Um, I can just kind of get a sense and a feeling from the images. As for the audience, if you're targeting local people, I recommend you 
start with simply zip codes and maybe gender and age if you have if you've identified a certain demographic that comes and becomes your like long-term customers, right? I wouldn't go into interests. Um, you were talking to me about somebody who has a really specific niche, but also in a specific area. If those are the only people that you serve, sure, you could go into job titles or if you're trying to, you know, find the um, the new moms for like mommy and me yoga, okay, you're going to do it. But you might get much more expensive costs and you might be leaving some people out. If you have a more general population, they just tend to be in like, okay, a certain age, gender, demographic, and in a location, stick with those. Right. Like, and what I'm thinking as you're saying this, because I always tell our yoga teachers, like niche down, specialize, do that thing. Um, And you're saying for the Facebook ad, we don't have to worry about that so much. Like probably our video or our text would be the niche down part. And then Facebook would start to know, oh, these people aren't interested at all. Like if it's for baby and me yoga, you know, the single 20 year old guy doesn't want to see that ad. Right. I mean, for, for mommy and me, target women, right? But the problem with targeting super, super niche things like, like new moms, it's very expensive to target them. Um, everyone and their mother is trying to get in front of them. And so Facebook's like, uh, there's a lot of competition here. Lots of people are trying to show ads to them so the the costs go up. If you target a more general audience, um, your costs are probably going to go down. Your click-through rate will likely be down. So it's all going to kind of balance itself out. But you also might get simply referral things, people tagging their friends in the comments or maybe not necessarily tagging their friends. Don't be alarmed if you don't see people tagging, but they might still be mentioning them, saving the link, sending the link to a friend, things like that. Okay. Would you encourage them in the video? Like, tag because no Facebook doesn't like that. Okay. Are there some other rules? Like Facebook doesn't like these things. They don't like before and after there's no before and after allowed like photos. Anytime you're talking about uh, desperate or burnt out or like kind of these negative emotions, sometimes you can get those ads through. Sometimes Facebook will reject them. And if you get a rejection, don't worry about it. Just, you know, read, try to get a sense and you can appeal your ad to, to ask them like, well, what exactly is the problem here? But don't be surprised if you're talking to like burnt out moms, if, if maybe that gets disapproved instead, go for the, go for the more positive angle, the, the benefits. Also some people, and this totally varies, can't use the word you very often. Like Facebook it's almost like they don't want you talking so much to someone straightforward, even though we all learn from a copywriting perspective that you should always talk to you. Um, But you can tell a story about someone else or about you as the business owner. Okay. So I'm thinking that one way that maybe would help this comfort level of yoga teachers of feeling like I really grabbed onto the video idea where you said provide something very useful. So maybe a pose that they did in their class and then to have a quick shot of where the studio is, like, here's how you come to the studio or here's whatever, some kind of a tour of the studio and maybe this quick pose, or maybe those are two different things. Should we, so you said five minutes, should we try and condense it down as short as we can? I would say make it at least two minutes so that there's actually like some time to build the bond between the view, you and the viewer. I was also thinking like, you know, five quick and easy ways to create a yoga habit when you have, you know, you don't have an extra minute in the day. I don't know. Just kind of like, how do you get over people's objections, identify the objections and then create content that helps people get over them. Right. Okay. Fantastic. That's great. Is there anything else that you would say, all right, yoga teachers, before you go do this, before you go create your ad, here's this one other thing. Make sure you get the pixel on your site. That should be the first thing. That's something you should do today, even if you don't use Facebook ads for the next three years. 
because you once you put the pics on your site, it starts collecting those audiences for you. It starts learning about who's interacting with your business. It's weird. Even if someone's just coming to your site now, Shannon, and they're signing up for something free, Facebook knows who that user is. They know the interests, the behaviors of that user. And now under behaviors for them is signs up for something free. Right. So that's why we definitely want to have that pixel in place ASAP. Okay. I heard that a long time ago, put it on my website and have barely done anything with it. So that's okay. <laughs> you, you did yourself a favor. Right. Also tell us about your offerings. Like how can you, cause I know you have some freebies. How can we work with you maybe for free or how can we take your course? So I think you've got a lot of good ideas on which ads to create. If you wanted more, I have a masterclass um, called the the five-part ad formula to sell online courses on autopilot. It's targeted towards course creators and coaches, but it's really for anyone who makes money with email marketing. So that's at uh, clairepels.com slash five ads. And then that's the URL that you eventually learned. <laughs> But then I think one that you're really going to like is the one on ad copy. So unfortunately, I don't have a landing page up for that. It's just on my site with this little pop-up. So they would either go to your site or we can put a link to it in the show notes. Yeah, we'll have to get one created and put a link to it. So I really, I, I think that one's especially good for like, what do I write? How do I create? How do I get people's attention? Okay. That's fantastic. And so then is your course open or it closes or? Enrollment is always open. I'm not sure when you're going to air this, but at the end of 2019 in, in December, we're going to be raising the, the price. So I do recommend, you know, if people are really interested to get in on that now, the very best price that people can get now is in that five ads masterclass. But I think we're actually going to be, um, turning that over to a wait list because we're going to do that webinar live at the end of the year. But if you just go to clairepels.com slash absolute FB ads, it's not the easiest thing to say or remember, but we can also link that up. And then, yeah, if you come to my site in the next, you know, somewhere before December, I'm going to be retargeting you. So you don't even have to worry about the URL. Just visit my site or visit me on Instagram. I'm going to get those ads in front of you. That's amazing. That's a great way to tell people like you won't have to go do anything. I'll just be there. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all of this. I feel like it's lots of information, but you really have a way of simplifying it down and just saying like, start here. So I really appreciate that. I hope people don't feel overwhelmed, but what I hope people can walk away from this with is just the understanding that, yeah, Facebook ads is it's a new skill to learn. It requires studying and and some time, but once you have it, it's, you know, like when you, when you open up the seats for this new teacher training, and if you don't have retargeting ads going, you're missing out on all the people who are not opening your emails anymore. And I keep seeing friends go through launches who don't know Facebook ads yet. And they feel like, I don't have the time to learn it right now, which I understand they're in a launch. But it's like, oh, if you had just, if you had only learned how to create that super quick and dirty Instagram stories ad, like those are my favorites because they're just, they're so easy to make. You don't even have to write copy. That's so true. And they pop up a lot. Like Instagram has them going through. Yep. And we do them the same way as a Facebook ad then? Actually, I have a totally free tutorial about that on YouTube. So if you just search, or we'll put them in the show notes too, Claire Pell's story ads. Okay. I, I just, I mean, I made that just because of how much I love doing them. <laughs> I feel like there's been some kind of a shift. I have to ask this question. Wasn't there a time where you were saying you don't do video ads? Well, story ads are kind of the only ones I really do, but that's not true. I also do the ridiculously useful stuff. I don't do video ads for like signups. Okay. Maybe I should go back to trying, but you know, Shannon, I've, I've gone through a lot of journeys about how I feel about myself on video. So maybe I just need to give that another try. I had a pretty successful video ad going to back in 2017 might be time to give that a try again. 
I think so. You have a great personality. You look fantastic on video. Like it's always, we're always our own worst critic. Oh my gosh. I'm going to go do some video ads right now. (laughs) Thank you so much for your time today, Claire. It was my pleasure. Well, Connected Yoga Teachers, how was that? What was your key takeaway? What is the action step that you are thinking about taking in your own yoga business after listening to Claire today? Thank you again, Claire. I feel like you have such a great way of taking something that is super complex and really breaking it down and helping us to understand it a lot more. My one action step after this interview with Claire is to get the Facebook pixel on my Pelvic Health Professionals website. So I have it on the Connected Yoga Teacher website and I need to get it on my Pelvic Health Professionals website. It sounds like one tiny, tiny step, but that's all I'm asking you to share. So I would love to hear from you. Who is in? Who thought of one thing that you're going to do after listening today? Share your one action step goal in our Facebook group or in the show notes comments. I would love to hear how it goes or what your plan is, and I would love to be here to hold you accountable. So if you're listening to this, you can reach out to me and say, Shannon, did you get that pixel on your website yet? Before I sign off today, I want to say a huge thank you to you for showing up. I know that you have so many things that you could be watching online, listening to for podcasts, reading, doing, and it just means a lot that you've hung out here and listened today to an interview that I'm really excited about and also to an episode that I hope makes a big impact for your yoga business. If you want to hang out a little bit more, I have some huge exciting news. Amanda McKinney and I are going to be presenting at the Toronto Yoga Show in April. We're presenting on the Friday. We're talking about how you can increase your student numbers It would be amazing to see you there. So come and hang out with us there, or you can hang out with me when I teach the Yoga for Pelvic Health training, which is September 19th and 20th in Meaford, Ontario. So go to theconnectedyogateacher.com, look under trainings and events, and you can find out how we can hang out together in person. Thank you to our Connected Yoga Teacher team, Suzanne Crunch, Nick, Sinead. Thank you so much for making today's episode possible. So I want to know, connected yoga teachers, what will you be doing this week to stay connected? Maybe to yourself, your yoga practice, or to your community so that you can share the yoga that lights you up.